Yo, what's up, dudes? Out the axe. Uh, not mine. Uh, this belongs to a YouTube buddy, uh, Chris. In fact, I put um, his. Uh, I put a link to his site. Uh, he has got a couple of places on there. One's more gaming, but he just started one that's more music. And um, he asked me if I wanted to check out his replica. This is a copy. And I said, sure, and the reason, you know, normally, I, I actually get asked that, um, surprisingly, a lot. <laughs> and I almost always say no. Uh, but the reason why I said yes on this one was because he modded the whole thing. He, you know, this isn't just a replica, which we've already sort of done to death. Um, it, but what he did on this was he went through and he um, replaced everything. And uh, I, I'm telling you right now, I can notice the difference, you know, right away. So uh, I'm running, what am I running? I'm running um, TH2 with the lynch box head and the XTC uh, amp. And, uh... And, uh... So, what he did on this was, um... First of all, the, the, the thing I noticed right away was that the shape is much better than mine. And I like the... I think the color a little nicer than mine. It's similar, but not... A little nicer. This is rounder. This is... A, it, it is in fact... Uh, he brought with him a real Supreme. <laughs> Which was nice, because I don't think I had ever played a real Supreme. And uh, they were surprisingly identical. <laughs> you know, the quality on the Supreme was, of course, much nicer. You know, in terms of it had the fret nibs, and obviously, you know, the top and the back were really beautiful. Um, you know, and it had an ebony fingerboard. This actually has a rosewood fingerboard. Um, but the neck felt almost identical, and they were about the same weight. You know, I didn't really notice a big weight difference between the two, and that was surprising to me because I thought the Supreme was going to be a lot heavier. I'll be honest, because you know, if I played my buddy Bobby's, um, you know, uh, his uh, classic custom and his um, uh, Budokan, they're much heavier, at least a pound heavier, maybe two pounds. So you know, they're you know they're noticeably nicer. So just to run through really quickly, what he did on this was he uh, replaced the tuning gears with real Grovers, and they're really nice. They, they look gorgeous. And um, he pulled the nut out and put a, a, I don't know, is it a bone nut? Or did he just put a regular? He gave me a little list of what he did here. Um, let's see. Re not replacement, but he doesn't say what he used. Um, just looking at it, it looks to be maybe a bone nut. But it's certainly very well cut. And it's got that taper cut. You know, in other words, it's it's a little bit higher on the low and a little bit lower on the high, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And um, uh, all Gibson pots, Gibson jack, Gibson switch. I think a Gibson tailpiece. The only thing he didn't replace was the bridge because the Gibson wouldn't fit it. I think they they're slightly off. I mean, something to do with probably the metric system, but uh, you know it, it's not going to fit in, so he didn't change that. But uh, the pickups are I want to say they're slash El Nicos. Um, they are uh, slash signature El Nico Pro twos. So, uh, number one, pickups are now slash signature El Nico Pro 2s. All electronics have been swa swapped. 
Um, all pot switches and knobs are Gibson. He so okay, so we replaced the knobs too. That's interesting. And then um, tuners are real Grovers. Uh, and then he had the action, the intonation, truss rod, bridge, a uh, nut bridge replacement, a uh, nut replacement. God, I can't read here. Um, so you know he went through and did, and did a. Uh, uh, you know, a full-on mod, which is what was so intriguing about it. And um, I've been playing it for a couple of hours tonight. He let me borrow it for a couple of days. And I love it. It's really nice. I've got a bunch of amps here we can try out. Um, a little brighter. the sound of the slash pickup. But I know not to play too many uh, too many slash riffs because um, they've been flagging me for copyright. <laughs> and it's like, you're really bumming me out, man. <laughs> so like, how many seconds of a song can you play before you start getting flagged? I gotta fight the power! <laughs> um, you know, the one thing that they still don't do is they, you know, they still don't do the large jack, right? So there, you're looking to spot the fake. You want to look for the, the jack plate. You know, and we talked about this. It, obviously, you could buy the replacement jack plate and put it on and make it look like it. But if you pull the plate off and it's just a small little hole in there, well, you've probably got a fake. And um, obviously, if it's a rosewood fingerboard, because they come with ebony. And uh, But I just thought it looked gorgeous. I don't know how much of that you can really see. I think it depends on where I turn, how much you really get to to see on the on the back here but um, and, you know the question I see over and over uh, on the on a guitar like this is how do you put the electronics in <laughs> right no back cavities so um, uh, the answer is uh, very carefully <laughs> so what you do is um, well, what you would normally do is you take a really heavy uh, fishing line or a piece of twine, you know, very uh, piece, you know, a little uh, string, and you would tie it to the pots, and then uh, you pull the pots out through the pickups. Right, there's a big cavity in here that comes out through the pickups, and same with the switch. You tie a rope, you tie a rope, <laughs> and uh, you pull it all out through the pickups. And then you make your changes, and as you do it, you uh, tie the rope that was on this to the um, new piece of hardware, and then you pull it back through again. <laughs> and if, you, uh, if you're a luthier and you've been dealing with this a lot, you probably have a few kind of weird uh, tools uh, to work on, like an ES-335, because there's no back panels on an ES-335. It's the same thing, but at least they have the F-holes, and they can work through the F-hole... Um, uh, the uh, the tool, and it's usually like some long thing to sort of go in and either hold the pot steady while you tighten it down or something like that. So uh, there's ways to do it. Uh, I recommend leaving it to the pros uh, unless you really know what you're doing. But I was just really blown away with how nice this guitar was. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it ran them about 300 bucks. 325 bucks, and uh, if you're wondering where to where these you get them, you get them online. You buy them in China through uh, uh, Trade Tang, DHgate, Alibaba, whatever. And um, you know you're gonna take a risk. 
when you order one of these, uh, I think he got two, and one was really nice, this one, and one was really crappy. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's batting 500. But, uh, you know, that, it so goes it. Right, that that's sort of what you what happens when you when you get a, these things. Uh, I've been really lucky with mine uh, that they've been uh, you know pretty decent and certainly not so bad after you know I set them up. It really, they needed set up. You know, you've got humped necks and you know uh, bad tuners. Uh, although I, I've been pretty lucky on that front, not myself, but uh, some other people I know got them and had like a, a completely broken tuner. You know, just just completely awful. Um, as a matter of fact, I have another copy, a um, an EVH stealth copy that came. The neck was too close to the bridge; could never get it in tune. So I'll do a video on that at some point. And uh, we literally had to like elongate the neck. I mean, think about that kind of work, right? You, you, you th these are really project guitars. But um, you know, for I think you know what he spent and what he has now. Um, <laughs> I think he's pretty happy. Let me see. Try another patch here. Oh yeah. See, I like reverb. Everyone's like, "Why are you using reverb?" Because I like to. I remember, I'm from old school, you know, metal. My middle days ended around 85, 86. By 87, I was out. I think in 87, I saw, um, like, the Chick Career Electric Group, or 87 or 88. I think it was, it was 87. I went to go see the Chick Career Electric Group. And they had a spry young guitar player named Frank Gambali. Uh, who at that time was really heavy. He lost a ton of weight, you know, and uh, he came out and he just blew everyone away. I was like, oh, you, you, uh, he's watching this guy? <laughs> you know, he's doing the, the sweet picking and, you know, he's like, look at me. <laughs> I'm better than you. It's like, man, he was good. And uh, I think I saw Joe Satriani that year at the channel. I saw Chick Career at the channel. Um, and I, I just started to transition. You know, it's like the last sort of, can you call surfing with the alien metal? I suppose you can. Listen to how in tune that is, though. It's really, it makes a difference when you get it intonated. Anyway, I just wanted to do a quick video on this. Um, to, to show that, the, you know, they can be made into nice guitars. You know, again, you're going to take some risk ordering them up. And, you know, everyone's always saying, like, send me a link. It's like, what am I, fucking Google? <laughs> you know, it's like, find your own fucking link. But seriously, you, you know, just go on there and look through, and they're like, but there's so many sellers and all this. So I'll give you a couple of tips. One, if it looks like a real Gibson, run fast. Because that means they don't have any fakes. And it means that what they're doing is just pulling uh, pics of real Gibsons off there. And you are going to be hugely disappointed. You know, you're going through, you're like, ah, oh, looks like crap, looks like crap, looks like crap. Oh my god, that one looks awesome. Yeah, because that's the real Gibson. <laughs> and they're trying to fool you into, into buying it and just move on. Because if they're showing a real Gibson... That means they have no guitars. They're just posting what they have, what anything they can just pull off the net. Because those guys who have real pictures, they um, watermark them all because they don't want someone else ripping off their picture. So how do you find a non-watermarked picture? You go on to uh, Google and you find a bunch of uh, pics of uh, you know of real ones and you use those. You know if it's like a you know a beautiful you know solid black or solid white background and it's like beautifully done i'm sure they pulled it off of some you know guitar website that's selling it that's red flag number one like right there so uh really you got to avoid that and you, you they have, most of the places have feedback check the feedback and um 
cross your fingers and hope something shows up because you know you, it, people rarely get ripped off uh, simply because well let me rephrase that people do get ripped off but here's how it works it's not like you don't get anything you just get something that like you're really disappointed with right so uh, they will send you a guitar but you know you order blue and it shows up green you know you order black it shows up brown close enough as far as they're concerned you know what are you going to do? You're going to go back to them and they're going to say, well, we'll give you 20 bucks back. We'll give you 40 bucks back, you know. Uh, so there is there's definitely some risk to it. And, um, you know, uh, you know, people always ask me, well, you know, would you recommend this like over an Epiphone? Um, probably not. You know, I mean, they're nice, but, um, you know, I, I think the thing about me and Epiphone is that I really just wish they would make the same headstock as they make on their Gibson. I would probably buy one. But they neuter their headstock, they change the look of it to a look that I don't particularly care for. They should take a page out of Fender's book and where, you know, the Squire headstocks are the same as the Fender headstocks. There's really no difference. But Gibson's so worried about people, I guess, you know, changing the name from Epiphone to Gibson or they're trying to make the Gibson owners feel like they have some exclusivity uh, that they refuse to do that and they make you, you know, use this, uh, you know, sort of cut cornered ones it, it, it just looks too bumpy to me and too small and it's too curved i mean they, the list goes on and on what about i don't like about the epiphone headstock um and quite frankly i the last epiphone i played was at guitar center and um uh in boston uh it was 899 which isn't that cheap i mean 899 really for an epiphone you know i mean i thought that was kind of pricey and i thought the neck was like a baseball bat it was much thicker than this neck and the only thing i could think of was maybe it was some sort of like 50s you know guitar and you know like a 50s because it had a nice beautiful top but if you look on the back like compared to like my standards it looked identical in terms of the wood so um uh, you know just you know for eight ninety nine, I'd buy one of these in a heartbeat over it. Um, and so it really just depends on the model. But you know, here's the, the the biggest drawback with the fakes, and I can't emphasize it enough because I have to tell people almost every day, <laughs> that, you know, about it, is that they can't be sold. Because I can't tell you how many people come to me and they're like, "I want to buy your guitar. I can't sell it. We can't even trade anything of value." Buyers aren't covered under the law. Sellers absolutely are. Right? It's to another, if you read the law. Anyone who transfers, trades, anything of any value at all, um, like we used to say, fuzzy navel lint is, value, is a valid cons uh, consideration in a contract. So, uh, you know, you really have to, um, you know, anything at all of value. And if you import for the purposes of resale, so if you import one, sure, you're probably okay. If you import six of the same color, well, you got a lot of explaining to do. It's going to be really hard for you to tell the feds that you bought six of the same color for personal use. I mean, it's pretty much going to be that you bought them to resell. So, uh, And you really shouldn't resell these in America. You buy them as like a lark. I, I sort of make them akin to like movie props, you know. Uh, they're fun and everything, but, you know, they're for in the privacy of your own home. They're really not for buying and selling. So when you buy one, you've got to say to yourself, I am stuck with this. I cannot sell this. And I see, and part of the reason why I do these videos is because I see them on Craigslist, and it pisses me off. You know, people shouldn't be selling these on Craigslist. They really shouldn't. eBay's pretty good about flagging. Craigslist, not so much. And now the people on Craigslist, to their credit, I haven't seen, I've seen a couple on there where they were saying, like, must sacrifice for $1,000, and it's like, you know, a Supreme, a Supreme, you know, as they say. Although this one actually says Supreme. They fixed the O. <laughs> they finally got it right. But we compared it, you know, if you look at the oval, you know, the um, the so-called world up at the top, just like I mentioned in my original video, um, it, it doesn't have the brass bits, right? doesn't have those brass bits. And if it's painted like this is, you're not going to see the scarf joint. So, and I've heard that some of the ones, I, like I said, I haven't bought a fake in years. Uh, probably going on at least 12 months, somewhere thereabouts, maybe a little more than that. And... Um, you know, maybe long. I think longer. 
because this is we're heading into 2013 it's been a while since i got them because like i said i sort of go through a thing and i'm all into it now i'm way into vintage ibanez you know though i'm starting to kind of get kind of into vintage kramer <laughs> You know, maybe the Ibanez bug is wearing off and I'm sort of morphing into old Kramers. But, you know, we'll see. Those are a little more expensive. The vintage Ibanez, I think, are the best deal on the market right now. But if you compare this to the one, the real Supreme that he had, uh, the world on this is not quite, is really an ellipse. It's not really a circle. And, of course, it doesn't have the brass bits. Go buy those brass bits. None of the fakes have the brass bits. None of them have gold frets. And they all have ebony fingerboards, but like I showed on my other one, you can get an, every, an ebony fingerboard. And they, I'm, I'm sure, could put gold frets in it, but the gold would be so poorly done. It would be like a lot of the gold on this, you just touch it, like rubs right off. It's like this the, the cheapest spray-on, you know, gold. It's terrible. Um, so, you know, these are things that can't be easily changed. You're looking for things like, like what this guy did, changed all the pots, changed all the pickups, changed all the hardware, and now you're saying, had the, the, the nut beautifully cut, you know? Now you're like, hmm, well, maybe that is, and it's, it's a better shape. It's like a much closer shape. In fact, we were comparing them side by side. The shape looked almost identical. Um, so it, it's a far more subtle difference than mine, which is looks more like squished, like it's squished down a bit right a little flat on the top um so anyway that's uh this guitar let's see if i can find a clean sound on here or like a crunch One thing that's amazed me is how much he uses the middle position with both both pickups on. I'm usually I'm usually one or the other. I'm always down or up, but rarely in the middle. Sounds great though. Do I have one more? One more in here. Oh yeah, there's the ultra. Uh, dry, dry though. A little better. Nah. Nope. I don't think so. There we go. It's a little quiet though. That's about it. I just thought I'd come on here and uh, give this a quick demo. And uh, that's about it. And I'll see you next time. And rock on!